thanks for staying with us. So the Nigerian Medical Association has condemned the gruesome murder of one of its members, Dr. Uyi Ilobi, who was said to have been killed by relatives of his patient at a hospital in Ogara Delta State. According to reports, uh, the <clears throat> Medical Association had received this shocking news that he was, this, this the member was killed by the patient. According to them, the response, the patient relatives of the, uh, of the above scenario being the response of the patient relatives to the loss of a patient from a suspected gunshot injuries can never be justifiable and has taken violence against doctors and other healthcare workers from injuries to murder. So obviously, this relative, this person that died, died as a result of a gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. And after that, after that happened, his relatives, maybe they weren't satisfied with the kind of um, treatment. treatment and healthcare he received, and then they took on the doctor and murdered him. Mm -hmm. They said that this is unbelievable, that in the face of the deliberating medical brain drain the country is going through, a few patriotic doctors that are staying back are being murdered and 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 and, um, and and killed by the same Nigerians they're trying to save. Mm. Now, this is um, worth talking about because many of us in Nigeria have faced this situation where we are angry, we feel that our loved ones are not getting the care they deserve, uh, we feel that the medical system is not um, <clears throat> up to standard, and uh, many of us have lost loved ones as a result of medical negligence. So, some of us have taken the way of the due process. Let us get them arrested. Others have just left it to God. Hmm. But these ones in the third category are taking hands. laws into their own hands and killing the doctor. What are your thoughts? How do we address this issue? Um, you can call us on 081-270-53687, You can also tweet us at TVC Connect with hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. When children are kidnapped, Nima, we tell our president to please send soldiers to schools, mm -hmm. send soldiers to communities. They are kidnapping our people. Now, doctors have been murdered. Do we send them to send soldiers now to hospitals to protect uh -huh. the doctors? This is such a complex... We talk to ourselves. Yeah. It's a complex matter. It's so complex in the sense that there's no way to regulate. You know in hospitals those days, they'll take your child and tell you, wait outside. So that your, your impatience, That's your it, madness, yes. and your restlessness waits with you yeah. while they are able to handle your child, then if something goes wrong, maybe a complication happens. You say, no, they took my child. I didn't see what happened. Now they say, come and see. You see, cannot be calm. When I was in the hospital, there was a situation that happened in my presence. The doctor was handling a child, and then he, wanted, he wrote a, a drug to be bought. But the system is that you have to get that drug, pay for it, go to uh, account, pay for it, and generate, you know, you even generate the bill, then go to, ph from pharmacy, generate the bill, then go to account, pay, then bring back to pharmacy to pick up the drug. And he needed to use the drug immediately. So when he wrote it for the mom, he wanted to give her, and then he remembered the system. He took it from her, went straight to pharmacy. But as he was running out, she drags him, pow, ah. in the face. <laughs> Why are you leaving my child? Why are you leaving my child? And this, she, she if he had beaten her, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Our service commission will come inside. Mm -hmm. Everybody else will come inside. NME. They will say, man, be two man. Mm -hmm. But she just slapped him point blank in the face. And the doctor was like, ah, oh, I'm coming back. He yes, went on, bought the drug, administered immediately to the child, stabilized the child. And then the other man came. Eh? She's a woman. The women are like that. Mm -hmm. They didn't even have a proper apology for these doctors. Most, a doctor was on call from, for 24 hours. And when he went into the call room to rest, cold in the morning, Janaza the next morning, they are overworked, they're human too. And if I didn't stay there, maybe me too, I would not understand. But I saw how they were worked, overworked, and sometimes I had to cover schedules that they could do, especially on weekends. And then we come in, and we're just screaming. I've been waiting since. I mean, whatever you're dealing with, the other person too is dealing with his own. Mm. So we need to talk to ourselves. Yeah. This family now brought a gunshot wound victim. Probably somebody hemorrhaging already, maybe don't even, you know, maybe he did his best, but he will never be able to and tell And maybe he today. didn't. Mm -hmm. So there are different cases, so there are yeah. places where he didn't. If, and but he does that justify? No, there are civil systems. Yeah. Mm. If he didn't, mm. get your autopsy. Mm -hmm. Check whether he did not. Yeah. Maybe he abandoned the body yeah. to the hospital. There are other ways. But you just killed him, yeah. and we'll never know. Oh, you thought, know, I, I really wanted to, my, I, I share that sentiment that maybe he didn't, because... 
if we heard the story of Bolani Rahim, she was taken to two hospitals. She mm. was still alive. She was taken to two hospitals that couldn't treat the gunshot wound. Mm. By the time they got to the third hospital, the general hospital, she had gone. So imagine when one gunshot wound, gunshot injuries are, very, are not as deadly as it is in Nigeria. Yes, gunshot wounds are deadly, but the issue of death is mainly due to the fact that they don't get quick the care. care. Yeah. Mm. Our doctors are not willing to. Our doctors are probably, the, their hands are tied as well. Sometimes I'm scared, are they even equipped to? But that's a, a different gunpowder, like it's a totally different situation. But we are a violent people. Simple. And a bunch of unruly people, the majority of Nigerians. This happens everywhere. It is sad that they would bring it to doctors. I've been in a, in, in a, in a, in a situation where I was in the airport and our flight got cancelled. And people. other people started destroying properties within the airport. I'm wondering, they, were beat, they beat up a police officer who was trying to tell them, don't destroy the properties. This is another person. Yes. This, is, this is not, it's not, it's not, it's not the right way to react. Yeah. And they beat up the police officer. Uh -huh. So it is, it is our response of violence to anything that we are uncomfortable with, a lot of us, not everybody. Mm. And it, is, it needs to stop. And the only way to stop is if justice is meted out to the people that carry out those violence. Exactly. You can't say there's mob action and you cannot arrest the mob. You can't find and anybody. you cannot find anybody to yeah. hold accountable. Yeah. You cannot say because three people beat the person up and the person died, you will not arrest the three people. Because until people face, they know that actions like this yes. cannot go. go. The then justice we will system stop. works. Justice yeah. system needs to work. That for me is the biggest. And my, I feel so sad for this doctor and many other doctors who did not die but have been beaten. Yeah. The ones that have been slapped and pushed yeah. and injured just because they are trying to do their job. Hmm. Let me tell you, remember your thoughts on and this. And then, you know, you would look at um, something like this and think um, it's a one off. But then I'm seeing conversations on the news where people are saying this is it's becoming like a thing, you know. So it comes from insulting the doctor first or a nurse first, and next thing, or, um, or beating up the uh, doctor or the nurse or just any healthcare worker and getting away with it and come to the point where now kidnapping is happening. Someone talked about a Dr. Precious who was kidnapped and eventually, you know, lost uh, their life. And if nothing is done consistently, um, then it will become a pattern. Then it will become the part where maybe our doctors will now have to start wearing uh, bulletproof to do their work and then they'll have us standing behind like a a, 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 a burglary proof to protect them from us um, a lot of this behavior starts from from the home from how we do things in little things you know in, in our little spaces where you're encouraging people to just be rude to anyone to talk to anyone they grow up to be adults that think that they can take decisions into their hands, they can be violent and get away with it. There's a social media palace now, everyone's like, violence, you know, violence. It's become a thing that we are proud of. I so violently responded to this person. Mm. I did not even care. So, you know, the I, gave it to yeah, them. I gave it to them. It gets from I gave it to them we by word. We celebrate savage. Yeah, we, we celebrate savages. We celebrate just being rude and being disruptive. And then we come to a situation like this. Now it's 2-0. You have lost the patient, and now you have to face a murder charge for doing, you Very know, important. what you could have taken time to, to feel, you know, taking your time away from that, and over time, healing will come. But after talking about that, we also need to find, we need to be honest about the way the system is run in our country. There have been situations where there have been negligence, particular doctors or particular hospital or just the system. And many people on the other side feel they haven't gotten justice. any form of justice. Yeah. And so people are feeling that, you know what, I need to take justice into my hands. So um, when people insist on the right way for things to be done, it is not pitting one side against the other. Yeah. It's because it helps everyone. Yeah. It also protects the hospitals yeah. where, you are, where a hospital will be... Um, um, accused of negligence if there's a proper system that's able to check through the yeah. system to make um, 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 the, uh, to just make sure that uh, they, I'm looking for the it's right word standard or? you know, just to vet the it's process very, very, that yeah. it good no, vet even the process, if you come and say oh, I lost a patient and I think yeah. that the hospital was negligent yeah. and we're saying that, make sure that you, uh, that system is something that we have in Nigeria and the hospitals are thinking that no, this is a way to just a witch hunters, but it isn't because it also gives you an opportunity if a vetting process is done to say, right. no, this hospital wasn't negligent or this doctor wasn't negligent. Mm. It just happened that this would happen. So you get justice on both sides. 
let Nigerians not feel that every mm -hmm. time something wrong happens, there's nowhere that they can turn to mm -hmm. to get justice. On the healthcare side and on the patient side, it's important to just, you know. Right. Mm. Okay, so I lost that call, but I was going to um, talk about the fact that we have, there's a mistrust and distrust for public servants across the board. So everybody's angry, not just at the doctors, at police officers, um, law last summer officials, law, everybody's all angry. So I have a story of a young man who obviously doesn't know much about Nigeria. He lives abroad. He's, he's in his 20, I think, or 20, I can't remember his age, in his early 20s. So he has all this bad news about Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria is horrible. So he comes into the country and he got stopped by the police for whatever reason. And the anger, what he's learned about Nigeria was what he used to respond to the, to the police. In anger, was, he was disrespectful to the police, insulting them that they have no right to stop him, you know. And it was that um, affront that caused the reaction or, that he got from the police. Now, I didn't, I didn't know much about what happened afterwards, but it, it was, you could see there was anger. He, didn't, he, didn't, he wasn't calm enough to listen to why this police, why he was stopped. What was the reason and give them what they needed? But well, he was too angry. So it's the same behavior that you are you're automatically say the police stop me because I'm a young person. I'm being stopped and you you um, this doctor has no idea what he's doing. Call my brother that is in America to come and tell you what to do. You know, we are constantly on the offense yeah. to all public servants, mm -hmm. both doctors, lawyers, police officers, firefighters, we know better than them. So no matter what they do to us or help us, we don't listen. So we, we, let's say we have it all upside down, yeah. the way we see these things. So a firefighter truck is trying to get to a scene, and woodlumps, woodlumps are blocking him because they are busy stealing. And then in the morning, they'll say, they came. They came late. Sometimes firefighters come late. They have their issues. But the times that we stop them, that we, we you know, block their entrance, we don't talk about it yeah. enough. I saw a firefighter truck driving on the way. People were not clearing for it. We were stuck in traffic mm -hmm. on their papa. The next day, a bullion van and one executive person was going to the airport. They clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they clear because somebody was holding a gun and standing out on the truck. But the firefighter that did not have gun, should they start carrying gun mm -hmm. before we clear for them? Because he was trying to respond to an emergency. And then he gets dead late. The other people who received him on the other end are like, is this the time you should come? We've called you since how many hours ago? You did not respond quickly. So these are complex things. I just say we need to talk to ourselves. I agree with Tokme and Miriam that the family that killed this doctor can be found. The death of their brother is another matter. But the death of the doctor for the oh, justice so for his family is an, an entirely another matter. It's a clear case of murder. No matter the provocation that they had, they clearly murdered this doctor. Yeah, and that's exactly a different matter. Gave about the fire truck. I remember last year, mm -hmm. I remember I was in an accident mm -hmm. that uh, um, an ambulance mm -hmm. was rushing and decided to overturn itself over my own car. Exactly. You remember? I remember. One second, and it was an car. empty come ambulance. Mm, I so remember you told, yeah. I, want you to, I want you to take that story because let me take Barista Lovetta, I'll come back to them. Oh, we lost that call, I'm sorry. Mm. Let me, because I want you to yeah. reiterate what happened that day. Yeah. Put us on that example of yeah. how we don't trust us. Yeah, so it, it was an empty ambulance. It was rushing, it was, there was traffic, it was and so it had the, the thing on. And he drove right over my car and turned, you know, God was just, just saved my life. And we asked him, where are you going? There's no one in the car. You're, th that's why um, Lagosians don't stop for so ambulances. For because because me, I, always say to, I used to always say to my driver, I don't care whether there's anyone or not, Just as long as, you know, decide. and you say, madam, don't, these people, they are, that's how they are, they, there's no one in. And that incident just confirmed to me there was no one in that um, ambulance. Yeah. You know, we ended up at the office. Do you know the way they insulted me and my driver for daring to even okay. come to that office. Mm -hmm. Well, I was like, who is the manager of this place? Madam, don't talk to me! No, no, no. I could not, <laughs> I just could not be like, I wanted you to handle it. But you know how, you know, you appeal to, the driver himself came and was begging, he would cost his job, he would do this. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm always on the issue and saying, we must make sure that the right thing is, and here I'm looking at a Nigerian, I can see the state of, you know, he, he, the affairs, how things are for him. And I know that this will be taking the job from him. But, it's just mm. the I, way I, Nigerians feel yeah. that we, we don't respect each other. Well, yeah. we, we lie to each other. Call. And so a mm. uh, Nigerian would feel that, you know, a doctor didn't do their job. And mm. so if the doctor did not do their job, they're not going to get exactly. um, justice from anyone. They need to make sure that they meet out the justice themselves. Let me take Oyin. Oyin has been calling for me, Jushaga. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, Oyin. 
Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you for the fantastic job you're doing. Thank you. Um, my contribution is this. We all have different things that we've gone through, and I can see different examples from ladies and all of that. But the truth is, we are in a country whereby justice is not being done. People get to go, get to just do whatever they want to do. If they want to give different examples of a only way that we Nigerians are very, very negative and we will just do violence and everything, we would not leave this people. I think we need a country whereby when you do something, you should be held responsible for it. You should be there to it. This is an example for others. If ambulance thing and apple to me, you'll be thinking people are you. Somebody is inside and everybody will play. Nobody is actually there. We're only really people generally. You go to schools and you see a parent slap a teacher. Oh my mm. God, and we are trying to train children to be better. This is several places. You go to an issue and people are just so unruly. People shout at me out. When you go to anybody, you can do anything and everybody does whatever they want to do. But when we don't have a sense that we are children, when you, you are held accountable for what you do. Exactly. One drug that for every sex, everybody is scared to pay for what they do. If exactly. you're a nurse and you don't attend to your patient very well, in the way you're supposed to, so there Thank should you. be a rule or something yeah. like body that sanctions you. Thank you, Oyin. Thank you, Oyin. Because I always. Thank you very much, Oyin. I always ask this question Do we really want a nation? Like, we have to ask ourselves, because sometimes I feel all of us just get a visa and leave this country and go and find the country we want to live in, because there's no need for a Nigeria. But it's easy to say that because we have the means. Mm -hmm. All of those, hang in there, all of those that don't have the means. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you don't like Nigeria for yourself, at least like it for that poor man that doesn't have any means to leave. Mm -hmm. Appreciate what? Nigeria. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm getting it somewhere. Because every little thing that happens, for example, oh, NDLE uh, accosted them, these barons, mm -hmm. wanted to burn up this thing, and Nigerians were saying on Twitter, ah, no, rubbish, it's like they've, they've taken half of it. They've, you know, we keep insulting people who are sacrificing their lives, their family, yeah, their time to serve. The same thing happens. Even, even um, I was watching a movie with my, with my momo um, over the weekend, and I was, not, not just momo, a whole bunch of Nigerians, and I was upset about the narrative the movie was pushing. And I was seeing how everybody was just supporting because a young girl married to her husband, and her husband was beaten at domestic violence. And then she had a friend who told her, listen, take this guy to court, go and call them at Lagos State Government, do, 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 you know? And I was thinking, oh, fantastic. They were saying, ah, I wish they could go to court. What else is, people talking about in, in my house. <laughs> and the lady now found out that the girlfriend, her friend who told her. Mm. Now I was now seeing. Was having her own, you know, that narrative that just makes yeah, you. Yeah. So the lawyer who was trying to defend her was upset that I've taken this case far. Now you want to drop the case because I wouldn't help the next woman. I was, I was doing a pro bono for you. I didn't know you want to, to, want to stop my marriage. You want to stop my marriage? I mean, the guy was beating you up. So it's the same thing that people don't trust the system. Mm -hmm. Because I would serve you as a pro bono lawyer because I feel that, oh, this will happen to you. But when I see that, I won't even touch it again. Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah, Do we want a issues. nation? So, I, you know, at the end of the day, we seem like we're talking about um, leadership, but I think it's self leadership. It's not really about anything from the top. It's about us taking responsibility. Us, Everybody taking responsibility. If I see you, if I see. Um, a, the, um, 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 a mob action. I was quickly called the police. Tap on everybody. No, let's not let this happen. Um, if you see someone in the hospital about to, like that person that's going to slap, everybody will just put their mouth together and say, ah, ah, can you do that kind of thing? Like collective shaming of bad character. Behavior. You know, when we see a bad behavior, we collectively shame it. We call it out. We name it. This is bad behavior. Don't do this kind of thing. Don't destroy our uh, property. Now. And Everybody must be in that space of we own this thing together. Mm. The doctors are making a huge sacrifice, huge sacrifice mm. Mm. at every time doing their own work, and yeah. we should respect them. Let me take this call from Barista Lovetta called back. Good morning, Barista Lovetta. Are you there from Delta State? Yes, yeah, good morning, everybody. You're, you're live. Um, Go ahead, please. I'm calling from mm. Worry. Nice um, speaking to you guys all. Um, I would like to say it's not good to make injustice on people. But the truth is, in our general hospitals, in our government hospitals, the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare workers, they are so, so insensitive. Mm. They, in true. fact, the, the way they talk to patients, mm. I think it's, 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 it's painful. In fact, mm. I'm not surprised this happened. It's just unfortunate. But they are so insensitive. They don't mm. care. They just speak. In fact, you prefer to die than even being there. So mm. I'm really sorry 
arrest for what happened, but they are not being set people. The doctors, the nurses, and the healthcare workers. That's what I've got to say. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you so much, Barista. So think? now, let us look at it this way. You have the worst doctor. Let us not assume the doctor is bad. Let's assume he it's actually horrible. was negligent. Mm. He left that person to bleed to death. Mm. In that situation, then what is the... What, how, do we, how do you confront that kind of issue? Mm. I, I, I told you my mother died of cancer last year, mm. and I've never been able to talk the story because I'm still processing it. I mean, she, I, when, when, I, when, when I heard somebody who had the same condition as my mom and the kind of care the person got, and I'm thinking to myself, did she get the best care? Mm. Was I given the right advice? Was I told the right things? You know, people kept telling me, oh, she has 18 months, you know, and I was thinking, okay, we have long term, we know. But the truth is that she didn't because somebody in that condition said, Wow, this person was obviously clear. Like she only had a few, like a few months to leave. Why Someone should have told you? me that. Mm. Mm. I'm thinking I have two, two years. I'm almost two years. You know, she was still planning ahead. Think so. It's the same thing. I, I was angry. I was hurt. I was. I just felt that I was misled. Mm. Would I use that to now go and start criticizing or I kill the doctor for what he did or would, you know there are different things. So, if, if in the case where the doctors are negligent. What should let, the relative do? Let's, let's even inform ourselves. So within states, I know for Lagos, I don't know how Delta is structured. There's a health service commission yeah. whose number, I remember the MDA at the time I was pregnant in 2016, yeah, he had his number plastered in all the words, the number to report, you know. So you will just, once the doctors or the nurses are giving you attitude, once you pick your phone, they know that you are sending a message. He shows up unexpectedly on Sunday saying, I got a message of an abuse and it will most likely meet the situation many, on the ground. So they were there are regulatory bodies in the state that brings, even the one we talked about, the hospital, when I called out yeah. to the hospital here, the next day, everything was put in place. So there are regulatory bodies that, you know, there are businesses to supervise and oversee the activities of these people. Just as the same with the police. We, most of us, we don't talk about it enough. Most of the reported cases of police abuses that happened the whole of last year, there were sacks, there were uh, prosecution, there were imprisonments, there were people who were laid off, some people suspended, some people demoted. Yeah. I took it in the papers. And so the bodies work. But Nigerians, do we really have the patience to report it? We want to do it immediately. Violence, like Miriam said, <laughs> do it immediately by yourself. You nobody has the patience to follow it through. Maybe you're looking at it one way or the other. Right. And there are other, other ways to, you know, and we must have patience in the, in the face of trial. Mm. Mm. We must be able to think in the face of trial. When I lost, when I had to, um, you know, evacuate my baby alive and lost that baby, mm. there were so many things yeah. going on in my head. Okay. Mm. But you and need to just... calm, you need to calm down. Let me take this call, then I'll have to wrap up on this. Good morning, are you there? Yeah, good morning, Mario. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, more I, I think I, I love your program. I follow you all day. Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you, Madika. We in Nigeria need to start taking responsibility of anything happening in that country. Because the, 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 the character of the doctor, or character of the, uh, the patient, is a product of our family and product of our church and the mosque. Hmm. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. you. Hello? Yes, so now we should start taking responsibility for what is happening in every area of our life. If we complain about the police, the police is the product of our family one by one. The, the doctor is the product of our family. So we parents should go back and start having training, having morals, having the way we behave. Let's assume, let, let me, let me, let me, if I, if I have a point to send a, a, a one one thousand picture for you from some of the people from, from China, they have the way they behave. But the reason is that we don't have the way we behave. Everybody, everybody is right, and everyone wants to do his own way. Mm. Thank you very yes, much. Absolutely. We have to wrap up on this, but mm. I mean, this is a conversation we need to, because we just got a press release from MN8 mm -hmm. this morning. We'd like to see where it, where it goes from there, what mm. happens if there's a response from the family, if this case have to take it to court. Mm. But we, we just have to start the conversation yeah. because many of us face these things and mm. we never know how to... And I'm happy that we it. start the conversation to put a spotlight on it and um, put it on the minds of people. So it's front and center, really. Mm -hmm. And then let us be able to also watch the process that, it takes, uh, that takes place mm -hmm. with this. And um, eventually, um, um, I pray that you know, proper justice is yeah. given. But then, more importantly, it will be a lesson learned for all of us on how to deal with situations like this. For our government and the systems that we put in place for people to get justice. And also, you know, 
for us as human beings and how we're raising our children, how we're um, interacting with each other, on the best way in tough situations to get our messages across without resorting to violence and disrupting the system. I think we can end with that. And also justice for the, to the gun victim. He must have died. We don't know what happened, the conditions in which he died, but he also deserves justice. And I know his family feels that they're giving him justice by killing the doctor that was in charge of him, but the truth is that we don't know what could have happened, and we hope that some kind of autopsy <sighs> can give us an insight into what really transpired, really bad and then real terms. justice is therefore served. Okay, that's all we can take on this. So we're going to link it to our, we have a next guest who's a doctor and is the chief medical director of Civil Life Mission Hospital. He'll be shedding some light on how we can better improve our healthcare facilities. Stay with us, we'll be right back.